What is up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Darkest Dungeon. I'm pretty excited. I, I like this game a lot. Like I try to express it because I think a lot of people saw me in the stream and they feel like I I'm salty. And oh definitely. I definitely get salt when I play games where RNG is just not loving me, but that's part of the fun, I think, is that rage and kind of like that joy. The alternation between the heights of joy and the valleys of despair is kind of the reason you play this game because sometimes I bet even the most hardcore player that, you know, loves the game, even the fanboys, can admit that sometimes you just need to stop playing with this game. You just need to walk away right now. Just walk away and just let it go till tomorrow because there are nights where I just keep trying to muscle through and, yeah, we're going to have to get rid of him, unfortunately. It's not... He's got too many... We... We're going to have to fire him. He's got way too many negative traits for us to really be able to financially support getting rid of them all. While I'd like to keep multiples... I would like, let's get rid of one of our highwaymen too, because I honestly, since the first recording session and the second recording session, I've actually kind of like stopped liking highwaymen quite as much. I would find them actually kind of as middle tier, I guess. They're not amazing, but there's always something better you can bring. Like a Hellion, for example. Hellions are super awesome, although she has Kleptomaniac, which is a big, big bummer. I would also have to buy her a couple of abilities, so for right now, we may not actually be able, what does Peroy have? That's a little bit better. Curious can become a problem because what that means is that anytime there's an interactable object, she's going to run up on it and be like, Ooh, what's this button do? You know, she'll pull a DD. What does this button do? And then be like, no, my stupid sea star DD will destroy everything. In fact, that's what I'm going to rename her. Her new name is going to be stupid sister DD. Oh, we ran out of space. Never mind. There we go. We'll call her sister DD. There we go. From now on. And there it is. I will. I like her abilities. She's workable. She's workable. She's not my favorite, but she's okay. I like how you can rename them before they even work for you. This game just treats human beings like they're chattel, like they're just property. Just keep throwing them into the dungeon. We'll be successful eventually. Let's see here. We've got Harvest. We've got Heroic End, which is a really good ability. Unfortunately, it doesn't work from the third space. That would actually be, I think that's how I would fix Jester. Make Heroic End usable from the third slot, and then you would have an undeniably strong third slot character, while at the same time, he's not too specifically useful. See what I mean? I might consider... There's an ability that this guy is missing, and I don't know where it is, but I want it. It's the Dirk Stab? Actually... He might be okay. As far as jesters go, I heard someone in the forum say all jesters are not created equal, and I think that works for every class in this game. However, for jesters, it's even more poignant because jesters are, they range from useless to kind of useful, and that's basically the way that they work. Not a whole lot you can say other than that. Now, Mama No, I want Mama No to be okay because he's turned out to be a fairly decent character. He's got a lot of positive traits and not a lot of negative traits, and so I'd like to take Mama No, and let's throw him into the transept for right now. And Anne's got... I don't know if it's worth it to throw her in here. What can... It, what's what's her... She's got deviant tastes. So she's not allowed to go there. Oh, that sucks. She can only go to the brothel, but is not allowed to visit the brothel. That's really unfortunate. That's a... That's pretty terrible. So with Anne's got, what we need to do with her is we gotta get rid of that right away. So with Anne's got, let's take her over to the sanitarium. I do like her. She's leveled up slightly already. Let's go ahead and get rid of love interest. And we'll start fiddling with... The Ligophobia doesn't matter. Hylomania doesn't really matter either. It just means that you're going to loot something that you would have looted anyways. Deviant Tastes and Love Interests. Well, Love Interest more specifically needs to go. All the other ones aren't so bad. If you're wondering what my order is for getting rid of bad stuff, anything that's a huge damage debuff to accuracy, anything that's a debuff to where you can relieve stress as well. So if they have anything like Tipler... So that means they can only drink to relieve stress. Get rid of that first because you want them to be a little bit variable in where you can slot them in, in your base. For right now, we need to focus on leveling up some of our characters and getting their abilities a bit more robust. And so for the time being, I'm going to spend this turn to make Reynald. He gets a little bit of crit rate and he gets a little bit of extra damage right there. I'm going to do the same thing with that ability. A little bit of extra accuracy, a little bit of extra crit rate. On this side... This one's going to give him way higher accuracy. I didn't even unlock it. That's unfortunate. With the level 2 of Inspiring Cry, what does that accomplish? Nothing? Level 2 is the same as level 1? Yeah, that needs to be fiddled with. They need to do something so that it's worth it, so you don't feel like you're buying something for no point. 
Because right there, I'll at least make the light radius like plus one, or maybe make the heal one to two, or make the stress heal five, or... Wait, is it? No, the stress heal's four. Maybe not the stress heal to five, that's overpowered. But I'd say change the heal from one to two, and leave the stress heal as it is. I don't know. I don't like it when abilities get no tangible benefit when you upgrade them, so you have to spend a bunch of money to get like... Basically, you're just buying things down the chain because you have to, not because you want to. I think that'll be good enough for him right now. Those tend to be the abilities that I really, really heavily rely upon with Michelle. Let's take him in and do something similar because I think he's going to be a long-term resident of our party. He's got automatonophobia and necromania. Okay, that's not too bad. The necromania is actually not terrible for him because he has a higher chance to loot corpses. So if you find like the desiccated remains of an animal in the forest, he's really, really good at butchering it and you almost always get food. If you didn't know about that, I did six in a row with him last night. Six corpses in a row that I got food from using my occultist in my other game. I might have just had a good luck streak, but it seems like he's better at it. With the pull, that's going to give us a better crit mod and a better accuracy mod since I use it so much. Yeah, sure, I'll take it. On this side, that's going to give us a heal of 0 to 12. That's pretty good. All right. It doesn't increase the bleed either, so I'll take it. Abyssal Artillery, I don't get to use much, but I like it. I should probably give him something he can use. Let's give him Weakening Curse, I guess. We're a little bit low on cash right now, but... Let's just, we'll wait till the next, we'll do another short mission, we'll see how much cash we can pull out of this dungeon. And then from there, we've got our A-team back, so that's good, we got her back, eh, I think I'd rather like, well, who was my, who was my go-to, Machalt? Machalt still got a little bit of stress on her, so I think I'll give her the rest of the day off. Let's take Revere, Revere works, I mean, Revere has, on actually both of them, we're gonna have to go back right now. And we're kind of riding the line with both of these Vestals, but we need Judgment on both of them. If we don't have Judgment on both of them, they, they become a lot less useful as backline healers. There's two builds. You can either have a frontline healer with a Vestal or you can have a backline. I much prefer the backline because it precludes them from getting hit by some of the bigger frontline melee mobs. Just, it's what I prefer. However, that does leave you really, really useless if they get pulled up to the front of the line. So, obviously you're gambling on certain factors. With her, she's looking... Right there, that's good. However, if you're on your A game and you don't get a bad roll, I will point out that... Where's the one that gives them minus dodge? Take that one right there. A little bit of variability, never kill anybody. Alright, so we'll take... I guess Reynold's gonna go out on this one. We'll take Razai on this one as well. We will take Sister Didi on this one. And we will take Michelle on this one because the game's a little bit grindy. No joke, you are going to have to grind a little bit with this game and there's really no way around it. We've got a short mission and I'm actually interested. All these other ones look like they're going to be a little bit too tough for us right now. I'm not sure why we have so many veteran missions when we have no veterans. You'd think the game would do like a passing check on that, but I guess it didn't. I don't know. We'll provision. Let's ride. Go for 8 torches. We'll go for 12 food. Go for two shovels, two keys, eh, one holy water. Welcome to the dungeon. Let's see if we can... I guess I'll check out this corner first. I don't know. I don't like to leave these little extraneous corners. It bothers me. It bothers me and upsets me. Hopefully, we've got some stun bugs right up and early. I'm going to start out strong by trying to nuke them down. Sometimes the best defense is offense in this game. Like, honestly, what is his 20% damage debuff from? Oh, it's from his flagellation. That's right. I forgot to mention that he got that. So he actually has a debuff right now. It's not a permanent one, but for his next dungeon, he has a debuff where he flagellated himself too hard, I guess, and it ended up, like, damaging him or, I don't know, he pulled a groin muscle or I'm not really sure. He's been holding himself a lot lately. I don't know if it's just bravado or if he wounded himself, but whatever works. I'm actually going to shift them around the line so he doesn't take any stress, and down they go. As you can see, like, this is like our A-team right here. As your party does get better, you will start to cleave through dungeons pretty quickly, especially some of the easier ones, so don't lose hope. The game just has a lot of meta. That's all it is. The game just has a ton of meta that you really just have to spend time learning, and then once you learn the meta, the game is actually not so difficult aside from those random just squirts of RNG. I call them squirts because it sounds kind of like I'm putting down the RNG, I don't know. A squirt of RNG definitely does not sound like a positive. Oh, we're about to get attacked again. That was quick. They repopulated this As corridor lickety-splickety. Alright, so these mobs right here. These mobs are troublesome because A, they can spawn a boss on you. They have an ability, it's not called cytokinesis, but it's called something else kinesis, and it causes them to spawn a boss on you, and it's... It's... it's an issue. 
It's a very, very real issue that you're going to have to deal with if it happens. It's got like 38, 40 HP or something like that. It's, it's troublesome when it occurs, especially if you're already struggling. If you're already having a bad run, it's basically insult to injury. It makes your life that much worse. All right. Another fight down. Unfortunately, we didn't get any lovin' for that one. A little bit disappointing. My oven is gone without lovin'. And so, that leaves me with nothing, I suppose. Let's go ahead and loot. Hey, another pack with loot. I'll take that as a consolation prize. I may try and do a darkness run right here, actually. If you're gonna... These are the corpses that I was just talking about on the character selection. I would have him do it. He has the best rate for me, anyways. I mean, he failed that one right there, but I'll point out my last six went perfectly. So, I think he might be better at it. Like, you know how the Highwaymen and the Bounty Hunter are better at disarming traps? I think he's better at corpses, like corpse-related stuff, and also scrolls and knowledge, I think. I mean, it's nothing that I can prove, because obviously the wiki has very, very little information on it right now. But still, it's just the feeling that I get. To quote the mighty, mighty boss tones, I suppose. I don't know, I feel very winded today, and I'm not really sure what's causing... Oh god, we got attacked by rabid dogs. This is an unfortunate fight, because every time they use that rabid rush ability right there, you have a chance of contracting rabies, which is a permanent debuff to your character. It actually becomes pretty troublesome. I'm gonna drag her up to the front, because she's the issue of the day right now, and I need her to go away. She's gonna use Eldritch Push right there. Oh, she resisted. Good. Well done, Ansgot. Well done. Like, that's... Hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. On the best case scenario, you get a bleed from Rabid Rush. On a worst case scenario, you catch rabies. And then I think I've also gotten whooping cough or something like that from it, or creeping cough, or I don't know, something that was a pain in the ass. It looks like they move up in the line every time they attack, which is going to become an irritant very, very rapidly. And also, she's moving back as quickly as she can. I'm going to go after a wicked hack right there, just in case. And so there it is. Luckily, she was no hack at delivering the wicked hack to our opponent's face. We should be able to make it out of this without too many problems. Okay, Rabid Rush, unfortunately. Eh, everybody's bleeding, but it could be worse. From the third space in line, he can Dagger Slash people, so that's pretty awesome. Dagger Slash, that sounds super. That seems like a name of a heavy metal band. We are Dagger Slash! <laughs> dagger Slash, feel free. You can have that one. I don't even want it. I consider it a gift to your band from Splattercat. Dagger Slash! Hello, Finland, we are Dagger Slash! Seems awesome to me. He's gonna, because he got the, the fascination with corpses, he's gonna go after it. But you see right there, he's actually, he's better at dealing with corpses. So just let, oh, we actually have a bandage right now. Let's, he's got lower health. We'll put the bandage on him. There we go. All fixed up or fixed down. It depends where the wound is, I guess. The wound is on your shin. You can't really fix it up. It's definitely being fixed down. Or dressed down. Even better, because that plays into dressing the wound. Ooh, I like that. On this side, you can use a shovel on this to instantly succeed at the roll. Eh, I would suggest it. Probably a decent idea if you don't want to catch a disease or a permanent debuff. It will, however, leave you at the mercy of the dungeon later on. This fight is actually super brutal. Let's... He does a lot of damage versus Eldritch, although his damage quotient is not... I'm sorry, his damage spread is not so great anyways. I don't know what I want to do right... Eh, let's just go... I don't know. Use up one of her dodges right now, because that's how I envision it in my head. Good. Dodge the Eldritch push. Fantastic. You will neither... Ooh, didn't dodge that one, though. Took that one right on the chin. Took that one right on the chin. Alright, let's start getting through these things before they use Cytokinesis or whatever the hell it is. We'll start nuke healing him on the off chance that, you know, he takes another crit and fairly short success. Oh, there's Cytokinesis. It's gonna spawn... Yeah, I think no matter what, it spawns another mob. You kind of just have to deal with that. A little bit of damage right there, and I think they can only use it once per fight. Don't quote me on it, though. That's always... I know I say that a lot, but seriously... Like, there's a lot of unanswered things in this game. There's a lot of, like, unearthed random factoids and things below the surface that I'm not really sure how to recommend courses of action aside from my own experience. Let's... I'm just going to try and keep on her. I mean, I'm going to move everybody else. I think he has... Let's use If It Bleeds on her. There we go. If It Bleeds is a very good ability, by the way. I know I don't use it very much because it doesn't have a high crit modifier, but it still does a really good job at, like, damaging foes. I, I'm going to move him forward because I'd like to get some heals going before anything else goes ridiculously wrong. Use Yop on that thing, although it may not work. I'm toying with fire right now. He could spawn a boss on us at any second or use Cytokinesis, exactly. But I think the, the benefits will outweigh the hazards if we just like stick this out for a little bit. Not too far, though. We don't want anybody to cut it off. 
All right, there it is. We'll reduce their numbers slightly. Stress is looking good. On the plus side, our stress numbers are looking real nice. Ooh, there's a nine. Very well done, Michelle. Let me, I'm gonna smite you. There we go. Get you on out of the way. Divine Lightning Falls and we get 500 gold for the fight. Yeah, we didn't have any other options. Like, I would have liked to have started off on a medium expedition. I'll probably let this one be a darkness run because we definitely have our A team like running this thing. So I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the light fall off a little bit as we go deeper into the dungeon, especially since we haven't really been tested that much as of right now. Got plenty of food left, like no real problems to think of. So let's get dark. Let's get very, very dark. I try to stay away from dark humor on the channel, but you know what? I think we can handle it for right now. Pack contains loot. There it is, and it actually it contained its inverse as well. It contained tools. Loot which contained tools. Wordplay punny. Not really punny. I guess that's just like wordplay. I don't know. What's it called? But there's a specific word when you can re-spell a word as another word, right? Can't remember what it is. I'm having a major brain <laughs> right now. I got nothing. She stepped on some deadly mushrooms, I guess, but it doesn't appear to have done anything. We'll stick this out. I mean, oh, we got another grave. Yeah, dig it up. Dig up her bones, to quote the misfits. There it is. We'll grab that. Trinkets and baubles. In we go. Paid for you know how I like them baubles. Don't be... Oh, we surprised them with darkness. This is the best day ever. Oh, I'm so excited. Abyssal artillery. I don't get to use that as much as I would like to, but there it is. That's how abyssal artillery works. I'm going to start dropping DPS on the girls in the back because I don't want them to live through this. Iron Swan her. If you don't know what Iron Swan does, it lets her strike the back line. Pretty useful utility. Pretty useful utility. We're looking good. Way to start the fight off. And we're going to get extra loot from this. A ton of extra loot, actually. Abyssal Artillery. I like the fact that I can shoot tentacles at them. It makes me happy that I'm not always on the receiving end of tentacles. I appreciate the fact that the development team put tentacles in that I can fire of my own to respond to the tentacles coming at me. I like it. It makes me happy. Uh, let's just go for if it... Ooh, never mind. Let's go for getting dodged. How about that? This should finish it, though. Oh, man. I spoke too soon. Spoke too soon. Every time. Ooh, damn. Somebody's channeling some anger right now. Nice job, buddy. Yeah, a bunch of consonants to you, too. All right, and so this box we will slot a key on in. That'll give us that. Ooh, this run's looking sexy right now. Any more fights? It looks like there's a fight in here, and then two unclaimed rooms. Stashed heirlooms in there. That's good. You should always be running. If you have your A team going in and they're not really struggling, run in, dar run in the dark. Seriously, just run in the dark. It's not that bad. Like, sometimes you'll get surprised and it'll totally hose you, but most of the time you're pretty good. All right, so there it is. A glint of gold. Accuracy and damage boosted. Bleed. Ah, we got a zero. On a zero to 12, we rolled a zero, and it made him bleed. We'll deal some damage to her just in case so that she'll bleed out on the next turn. Is that a two damage per round? Okay, so she'll bleed out eventually on her own anyways. Let's focus on healing him for right now. Three. Eh. Not the best roll. Kind of a middle roll. I mean, is what it is, I suppose. Bunch of bleeds flying around right now. Let's get going with DPSing the front line with him. If you're wondering why I use the scroll so much, it's actually one of the better AoEs in the game. Like, it's a really, really good AoE. You should be using it. And Eldritch pull from the back line. Resist? Oh, no resist. Okay, well, it's not as damaging as it could have been. So, let's go with word reconstruction right there. Play a little bit of Bookworm, I suppose. I love Bookworm. Bookworm is an addiction for me. Oh my god. I go through phases with Bookworm where I just play it nonstop. Finish her off, maybe? Nah, nothing. We can hope, we can dream, but she definitely can't guarantee Darkest Dungeon. That should be their low that should be their their catchphrase. We can hope and we can dream, but we cannot guarantee. Or we can hope and we can flee, but we cannot guarantee. That works for me too. I'll take either or move her forward so that she's not so precariously placed in our line. Finish that off since we know we probably don't have any more combat going for us. Yeah. Creatures can be okay. They can be beaten. Couple of G-dubs and some ravens. We're looking good right now. Yeah, buddy. This is the run for us. Do darkness runs. It's a good idea. I don't run them all the time, but if I'm trying to farm up loot, definitely. Especially with your A-team. If they're not struggling, make it harder on them. If they can handle it, definitely. Unleash it. Unleash the terror upon them. I looted everything, didn't I, right? Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I got everything before we quit out on this dungeon here. 
On this side, we got a trap. I think he's okay with this. I think. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. The mushrooms... I haven't figured out. I think the alchemist, the plague doctor, is good with the mushrooms. I wonder how this works. It's a box. You put stuff in it. I had a character one time do that with a book. She's like, I wonder how this works. I'm like, it's a book. Clearly, you're illiterate, though. So, let me explain. There are things on it that mean pictures. Like, so as you as you look at the little symbols on the book, it gives you head pictures. And that is how a book works. <laughs> That's it. We're out of here. So, there it is. Let's see how our synopsis went for this one. Made a lot of money, I think. I think we did pretty well. That should help us square away some cash. Yeah, like 9,000 and then a whole bunch of heirlooms of varying degrees. So, the deeds are always hard to come by, so I'm stoked about that. You can focus on certain dungeons to get certain things. So, as you can see right here, we didn't get a whole lot of G-dubs or portraits, but we definitely got ourselves some, some deeds and some plaques. You know, it is what it is. Thick-blooded, Warren's tactician, he got diurnal, that's not going to matter, and love interest, so we'll have to get rid of that on the next turn. Back to town we go. Alright, my name is Splattercat, thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Darkest Dungeon. I look forward to seeing you all in the future. I apologize for any recording issues that are contained in these videos. I have seriously tried everything but OBS to get this working, and unfortunately I keep running out of time and just having to record anyways, otherwise videos don't go up, so I do sincerely apologize if there's problems with the video. I... I've done my best here, but basically this game hates every recording software ever. I I should probably swap over to OBS since I have it set up on my other computer, but I gotta get it set up on this one now too. So anyways, Darkest Dungeon, check the game out if you're enjoying it. I will see you all later. Hi to everybody.